Hi everyone, there has been another fascinating match between AlphaZero and Stockfish. Here's one pretty amazing game, AlphaZero is white, Stockfish is black, and we have a Karakar. I'm going to zip through these moves since it's just the opening book. Okay, F6, first move out of book by Stockfish. Quite a thematic move. The idea is to break down white's center by attacking the e5 pawn, but alpha zero ignores this. It plays c3. And the point is that after black wins the pawn on e5, the dark squares are weak. Rook e1. Rook is opposite the queen and the pawn on e6. Queen c7. Bishop h check. This is quite a weird looking move because, well, what if g6? This just gains a tempo, right? Well, alpha zero's clever point is that g6 weakens the dark squares even more. Bishop d4, and you can see that, yeah, white's got play here. So after bishop h5, knight to g6, g4, bishop d3. Knight b3. Knight is maneuvering to the very strong d4 square where it attacks this pawn on e6. Nice play by Alpha Zero. First, it stops the bishop from defending e6 by attacking it with g4, and then it maneuvers the knight to attack it. It's found the target and it's going to do everything it can to put pressure on it. Bishop c4, knight d4. Bishop takes g6 looks like quite a good move, but after h takes g6, yes, the structure has been fractured, but the h file is opened and there's actually huge threats here. This is very good indeed for black. So, knight d4, e5. And it looks like it's attacking the knight on d4, but just b3 by alpha 0. If he takes d4, bishop f4, we've got a discovered check and white would win the queen. So after b3, bishop a6, bishop f4. <laughs> this is e5 is still a weak pawn even though it's managed to push forward. Um there's just so many pins here. Knight f4 is impossible, the pawn can't move. E takes d4 so it doesn't work because of bishop takes c7. So black castles, and here there's a few moves that look good for alpha zero, but it played none of them because it just knows better. Uh, knight e6 looks like a fork, and it is a fork, but knight takes f4 is a nice move for black. And then after white takes the queen, knight, ta uh, knight h3 check. If king h1, uh, then we have knight takes f2, which would win the queen back. So king g2 instead of king h1. Then knight f4 again and white should really go over perpetual here with king g1 because if they try and hold on say with king g3 well king takes c7 or even after king h1. Um, it's just Black's got a lot of compensation for the queen here because we've got two minor pieces and what a pawn, two pawns, one pawn for the queen. Knight on f4 is a very beautiful piece. The king position is really bad for white. Okay, so knight e6 doesn't quite work, and bishop takes g6 also seems like a good move, winning the pawn back. But once again the h file has been opened, queen d7 and suddenly it's quite tough for white. You know this g4 pawn's a bit ugly, pressure down the h file, this bishop's very strong here. White's king just feels just poor, poor king position. So <laughs> alpha zero just retreated the bishop which is quite a clever move. Pawn can't take the knight and this e5 pawn it's just not going to be held onto. Rook to e8, and now a4. And this is quite a nice move. Alpha Zero has sort of examined black's pawns here. 
and it seems that b4, b5 is going to be an effective pawn lever to create weaknesses. So I think that's why a4 is played. King to b8, b4, bishop d6, and now the knight is threatened, so knight f5. And this is one of the drawbacks of the e5 move. This square on f5 is wonderful for the knight. Bishop c4, queen d2, king a8, queen g5, nice square for the queen. Interested in this e5 pawn, which is going to drop. Rook e6, and now alpha 0 gets that pawn, but at the end of this line, uh, Stockfish wins the g4 pawn. <laughs> but this is what I find so amazing. This position here, from here on, just alpha 0 plays just simply wonderful. So what have we got? We've got opposite colored bishops, black is up a pawn, but crucially, white controls the only open file. And also, opposite colored bishops, you know, everyone's heard that they tend to be drawers. But this isn't the case if heavy pieces remain on the board, because then there's targets which can be attacked, and which can't really be defended, because, you know, your bishop is just on the wrong color. For example, maybe a7 could be weak in the future. The bishop and a rook could attack it. Black can't defend it because their bishop is the wrong color. And the play here is just fantastic. a5. Um, yeah, it's a very deep move, a5. In the future, a6 is going to be an effective pawn lever. And now it looks like white's pawns are just frozen here. The bishop just covers all these pawn pushes. But Alpha Zero must have seen that in the future, the bishop would have to defend future weaknesses on the queen side. Now this sounds sort of like gibberish, but it just shows just how powerful this Alpha Zero is. Just watch and you'll see. Rook f6, rook a, e1, threatening back rank stuff. a6 isn't working because, well, it's actually me, I think. This is one actually quite nice line. And bishop c7. So, the point is rook f8, uh, rook f8 has to be played, and that is obviously very passive. King f2, g6, rook e7, and now h5. And this is what I mean g6 is a weak pawn, and it's just the principle of two weaknesses. It's just such textbook stuff that Alpha Zero does here. And You'll see, king g3, improving the king, the king's just marching up, sort of uh, reminds me of that short game that everyone's seen, where short just marched the king up to a fantastic position. Bishop d3, king h4, bishop f5, king g5, this is what I mean when I was on about the two weaknesses before. g6 is a weak pawn, and a6 is going to be an effective pawn lever. This bishop cannot defend against both, and it's just amazing because white is down a pawn but just in complete control. Rook c d8, bishop d g7, rook c8, rook on one to e2, rook c d8, h4, rook c8, and now a6. It's just textbook stuff. The bishop can't defend against the pawn lever and the weak pawn. B takes a6, and now this weak pawn on a7, which I talked about before, is attacked, and one. And yeah, black is just helpless. And I think really it's just a game of spot the weakness. We've got three weak pawns in black's position here. Once again, the bishop cannot defend all of them. And the rest of the game, it's really close to losing now, I think. It just, we just see Alpha Zero organizing itself to once again, um, get the rooks in a position where the bishop cannot defend this, both these weak pawns. This is exactly what happened. And here the position is just losing. h5 is dropping. f4 is a pass pawn. Queen and square defended by this wonderful bishop. And the game is just over. Here are the last few moves. They don't need annotations. Okay, so really what you need to get out of this game is principle of two weaknesses. Alpha Zero is just playing textbook. Textbook is just the best way of describing its stuff. And it's a very human-like play. Okay, thank you very much for watching.